Hello, welcome to Dwamega Virtual Learning. This is Lesson 2 on Circle Theorems. And I suggest if you haven't watched Circle Theorem Lesson 1, uh, you go back to watch that because I'll be making reference to the previous theorems that we've gone through. In Lesson 2, I'll be talking to you about cyclic quadrilateral theorems, radii, tangent associated theorems, and alternate segment theorems. And where possible, I will use algebraic proof to support the theorems as well. So we continue from where we left off in lesson one. So we are on number four now. So theorem four says opposite angles in cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. Now first, what is a cyclic quadrilateral? It means a quadrilateral that fits perfectly inside a circle such that all the four corners must touch the circumference. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a square or a rectangle. As long as it's four-sided and all the four corners touches this circumference, it becomes a quad cyclic quadrilateral. And the rule says that opposite angles must always add up to 180. So A plus B must equal 180. C plus D must equal 180. It's as simple as that. And in short, to prove that A plus C is equal to 80, recall your our first theorem which says angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So I'm going to create an angle at the center with reference to A and angle at the center with reference to C. And you realize that the center and sorry, the circumference is angle A, therefore the center must be twice that which is 2a the circumference is c so the center must be 2c now we know angle angles around a point equals 360 so therefore 2c plus 2a equals 360 if you divide through by 2 or if you factor out 2 on the left hand side and divide through by 2 you end up a plus c equals 180 degrees so that's what you end up with but you realize that a plus c is exactly the opposite angle that we are talking about so in similar vein b plus d must also equals 180 because you can also create another center angle with reference to b and d and you end up with the same conclusion that b plus d equals 180 degrees now pause the video and see if you can work out these spacing angles. Okay, let's start. This is a cyclic quadrilateral because all the four corners touches touch the circumference. So we just have to look at opposite angles. 110 and x are opposite. They must add up to 180. So 110 from 180, x is now 70 degrees. Y and 120 opposite, they add up to 180. 120 from 180. 60 degrees. Here, let, let's look at it separately. So let's first look at the blue cyclic quadrilateral. So A and 95 opposite. So A is 85. B and 135 opposite. So B should be 45 degrees. Now, there are ways you can work out C. You realize that 85 and C are in the same segment, so you expect them to be equal. That's one way of knowing that C is 85. Another way of knowing C is 85 is, look, C and 95, they are in this cyclic quadrilateral, as you can see. So they must add up to 180. That is why that angle is also 85 degrees. Additional rule to cyclic quadrilateral also goes like this. The exterior angle is always equal to the opposite interior angle. So H is equal to D, G is equal to C, E is equal to B, and so forth. So that's this additional rule for you to note. Theorem 5. Tangent and radii meet at 90 degrees. So whenever you have a tangent, and a radius, they always form 90 degrees. So that's what 
25 is saying simple as that but one feature that i want to point out clearly to you now is that when you have tangent from one particular point outside the circle the two tangents are equidistant or for that matter congruent the length of the two must always be equal that makes the triangle gcd isosceles gcd becomes an isosceles triangle so that helps you to work out missing angles when it comes to this nature of uh, diagram we'll be coming to question like this later on during this lesson so let's get on to theorem six alternate segment angles are equal alternate segment angles are equal what is an alternate segment angle so, okay the angle between a chord and a tangent so this is a chord and that's a tangent so the angle between this chord and a tangent is equal to the opposite angle in the alternate segment you remember that if this is the chord we have the minus segment and the major segment so we form an angle here between the chord and the tangent and given this chord the only segment left is this section and the only angle left is that angle so that's what is talking about alternate segment this x must be equal to this x they must be equal in the same way if i look at this angle with a chord and a tangent given this this chord the only segment left is this and the only angle left is that one so therefore if this is a that must also be a that's what alternate segment is saying and so forth now let's look at a simple proof of why it must be so so i'm going to prove to you why x must be equal to a o is the center and bc is the tangent first from theorem 5 tangent and radius meet at 90 degrees so this is the radius and I've sent it to form a diameter so so the radius and the tangent this must be 90 degrees now I'm gonna join GF with a chord and you realize that I now have the angle D and angle G they are angle in the same segment so if you recall theorem 2 angles in the same segment must be equal so if this is a that is also a and also if you look at this this is the diameter and I have a triangle in half of the circle again recall theorem 3 angles in a semicircle is right angle so this side must be 90 degrees now sum of angles in triangles add up to 180 if this is 90 and this is a then this section must be 90 minus a so you have 90 minus a and we've already said that tangent and radius make 90 degrees so 90 minus a plus x should equal to 90 degrees and if you cancel out the 90s because they belong to each side of the equ uh, equation then rearranging we have x equals to a that's the alternate segment so remember alternate segment x here must be equal to this angle a now pause the video and see if you can work out the missing angles let's check this angle relates to x so x is 65 reason alternate angles are equal y and 50 also equal now here take your time let's go alphabetically a is equal to 65 b relates to 60 c relates to 60 as well then we have D D relates to 65 then E angles on a straight line make 180 so we can easily work out E as 55 and now we know 55 we can now work out F as 55 as well then 
we have that's what's 55. Theorem 7 simply a plus b must equal 180 a plus b remember what we talked about tangent and radius meet at right angles so you could see that that's 90 and that's 90 and because this is four-sided and it should add up to 360 if I know these two as 90 and 90 that means 180 for 90 and 90 the other 180 must be for a and b that's what a plus b must be equal to 180 simply put now what you need to remember is that always if you make a straight line from point O to B you have two right angles right angle triangles and these two are congruent these two triangles are congruent so it's very important that you note it because sometimes Pythagoras questions could be thrown into circle theorems and you need to be able to recognize that so that is a right angle triangle and OB is a hypotenuse that is also right angle triangle OB is hypotenuse for both triangles so let's look at a question like this one you're supposed to calculate angle X and calculate the length of BC first you know these two are 90 degrees you should remember because tangent and radius there's a tangent and the radius they make 90 the same applies to this one radius tangent now you remember that these two angles they must add up to 180 so this is 60 this angle alone is 120 and this da is a diameter and it's a straight line angles on a straight line make 180 so if this is 120 120 from 180 x is equal to 60 degrees simple as that we are supposed to work out line bc and like i said ocb is a right angle triangle so that means that it's pythagoras question and we are good, supposed to use the subtraction rule because it's not the hypotenuse so bc is equal to square root of 12 squared that's the hypotenuse squared minus the other side 6 squared and when you work it out you get 6 root 3 to 2 decimal place 10.39 centimeters so that brings us to the end of lesson 2 thanks for watching and look forward to lesson 3 where we talk about intersecting chords and seconds and please share with your friends and thanks for watching